Hello, welcome to this presentation of International Plumbing Code Chapter 9. My name is Thomas and in this presentation we are going to be looking at section 906 which is vent pipe sizing. Let's have a look. Join me then in Chapter 9. Make sure you've got your book open and you're following along because you're going to want to look over these tables at the same time as we are discussing these so that you can get a good handle on how this whole sizing thing works. We'll start in section 906.1 where it talks about the size of stack vents and vent stacks. There are a few things you need to know in order to be able to determine the size and here's what they are. First, you need to know the developed length of that vent pipe. That would be from where it connects to the drain to where it terminates and we'll talk about what that termination means or looks like but you've got to have a length. Then also you need the total drainage fixture units for the drains being vented. Now there's a really important point here that I need to make and that is in order to size vents you need to know how to size drains. If you're not familiar with drainage fixture units or how to size drains then I would recommend you go back and view the presentations from chapter 7 and make sure you know how to size drainage pipe before you get too deep into trying to size vent pipe. But with an understanding of drainage fixture units you'll do just fine. Some other minimum requirements for the sizing of vents is, first of all, it's never going to be less than half of the diameter of the drain served. So if it's a four inch pipe, the drain should never be smaller than two inches. Three inch pipe should never be smaller than one and a half inch for the vents. But also, there is a limit of one and a quarter inch. The vent pipe itself should never be smaller than one and a quarter inch. Or you might look at that previous requirement that says, it has to be at least half the size of the drain served and you have a two inch pipe and then you'd be like, well, I could run a one inch vent off of a two inch pipe, but that's not acceptable. One and a quarter is the smallest that you would ever run for a vent pipe. Now please also be aware that 906.1 provides for us a table to size these vent pipes. We will look at that here in a minute, but it is connected to this section. 906.2 talks about vents other than stack vents or vent stacks. So you know, stack vents and vent stacks are, are your main vents going out and we tie other vents to those in many cases. But those other vents have this similar rule of never less than half the diameter of the drain serve and never less than one and a quarter inch diameter pipe. Now as we talk about modern plumbing and the venting that we do in buildings most of the time, we don't run inch and a quarter pipe for anything, right? I mean, really? Plastics, PVC, ABS, when we're running drain pipes, we just run inch and a half is about the smallest we're gonna go. Uh, metal pipes, especially cast iron, two inch. So these are some minimums that apply. If you go back to the galvanized days, you'll see inch and a quarter pipe run for vents, but anymore, that's not even a thing. Let's focus in on this definition of developed length. This is in 906.3. It says the developed length of an individual branch circuit and relief vents shall be measured from the farthest point of the vent connection to the drainage system to the point of connection to the vent stack, stack vent, or termination outside the building. So we can break this up into sections and measure individual vents from the point where they connect to a drain to wherever they terminate. And that termination could be a stack, a vent stack. Uh, it could go outside. There's a variety of things we can do. So here you can see there's a number of drains being vented. They're all connecting together and there's a vent that goes out the roof. That's a term you may want to lock into memory. An abbreviation VTR on a plan refers to vent through the roof. So there you go. But you can see here that uh, from any one of those vents, the developed length is going to be measured from where the drain becomes a vent to that point of termination, the vent through the roof. Again, we do have other options for vent connections. So on the left side of this diagram, there's a vent stack. That's the one going out the roof. If I'm sizing this individual vent or a branch vent over here, these developed lengths can be measured from the drain to the point of connection at that stack vent. That's another option for your developed length. Let's get into this step-by-step -step process for sizing of a vent. Now, these steps are not detailed one through four in the code, but it's all there, it's all implied. So let me give it to you. This is what you need to know in order to use the vent sizing table in 906.1. First of all, you'll need to know the soil or waste stack size. So the pipe size of the drain 
as we talked about earlier, you'll need to know how to size drains. Number two, you need the drainage fixture units being served. Now, a drain pipe can serve a variety of drainage fixture units, so we kind of need to know how much is going into this drain. Number three, you need a developed length. That's the length of the pipe that we've looked at. And then with that information, you can determine the pipe size on the table. Have a look then at table 906.1. You'll see a number of columns here. Let's start on the left. This first column gives us the diameter of soil or waste stack. So that's where we take the pipe size and start there. The next column gives us the number of drainage fixture units being served. So again, for a three inch pipe, there may be any number of drainage fixture units going into that, but we're gonna break that down a little bit. We're gonna find the correct row that we should use based on the size of the drain and the drainage fixture units. Then as we come across to the right, there's a whole bunch of columns that detail out the developed lengths. You can see they're kind of spread throughout that in a diagonal fashion. What we'll do here is we'll say, okay, I, I figured out my drain pipe size and the drainage fixture units. I'm gonna find which column is greater than or equal to the total developed length that I'm dealing with in this vent. And then from there, I can go straight up to the top. The pipe sizes are listed at the top of those columns. And that's basically how we use this table. So when using this table, we start on the left, we come across to the right, and we go up to the top. That's a different pattern than when we're sizing drain pipes. So don't try and move about the table in the same way. Once again, start at the left, come across to the right, and go up. With the information you have, you'll find your pipe size. Let's give it a try. Venting example number one. Here we have a stack. This is obviously a tall building. We have 140 feet for this vent developed length. We are told that the drainage stack being served is four inch. The fixture unit load per branch, there's a bunch of horizontal branches here, it's 35 drainage fixture units each. The total at the bottom is 455 drainage fixture units. And once again, we've got 140 feet of developed length. So with this, we should be able to size our pipe. Let's figure it out. We go to the table. First of all, we had a four inch stack. So we come down on that first column until we find the fours. Then we've got to narrow that down a little bit by the drainage fixture units. We come across to the right. The drainage fixture units that can go into a four inch pipe start with 43, that's too low for us. 140, still too low. 320, still too low, but we had 455. That's less than 540 drainage fixture units. So we're gonna settle into this row as we come across. Now, as we come to the right, Remember, we had 140 feet of developed length. It's going to be more than our 21, 23 in this column, more than 50, but it's less than 150. So we're going to stick to this column. We'll move up to the top, and that's where we will find our vent size. And it turns out to be a three inch vent. Let's try another one here. We're dealing with a vent stack and basic information here is provided. The drainage stack is a six inch. The total fixture unit load is 750 drainage fixture units. The developed length on this is 280 feet. And let's go to the table and figure out our vent diameter. We started with a drainage stack that is six inch, so we come down till we find the sixes. Come across to the right with our 750 drainage fixture units. That's more than 500, but it's less than 1100, so we can stick to that row. As we come across, our developed length was 280 feet. That's more than 26. That's more than 100, but it's less than 310. So we can take that column, head straight up to the top, and we're gonna find that we have a five inch vent pipe for that vent stack. Let's do one more example. This time we're dealing with a stack vent instead of a vent stack. So you can see there's a four inch stack. There's a number of drains going out at different branch intervals. All those vents are tying together and coming back to the stack vent at the top. So. This makes for a shorter stack vent. We only have 30 feet. Well, let's look at all of the requirements here. We have a four inch drainage stack. The total fixture unit load is 140. Again, the stack vent itself is 30 feet from where it stops being a drain and becomes vent and goes out the roof. Let's look at our pipe size. Come down the left column with our pipe size for the drain. It was four inch stack. So we find our fours. We're gonna narrow that down by our drainage fixture units. We had 140 drainage fixture units, and there is actually a row that's right at 140 drainage fixture units, so that's as 
close as we can get, as much as we can put into that one. As we come across, we have our 30 feet of developed length for that stacked fence, so that's more than 27. It's less than 65, so we can stay in this column. We'll head to the top, and we find that our pipe is two and a half inches. Now, you and I know that two and a half inch DWV pipe, PVC, ABS, cast iron, is really not a common size. That's okay. We'll just round up, right? If it says two and a half, let's just go. We'll get some three inch pipe for our vent. That'll be just fine. Let's review what we know. For vent sizing, we have a minimum requirement of half the size of the pipe. So we have some individual vents here. We have toilets that are three inch pipes. Each of those would need one and a half inch vents, period. The lav there could go with a smaller vent. It could be as small as one and a quarter, but that's the minimum size possible. We can get into branch venting where we see a bunch of drainage fixtures in a row. And we're just going to connect all of those vents together. But similarly, we would look at each drain being served. Look at the drainage fixture units. For most of these, you can see it'd be a one and a quarter inch pipe, or really, like we talked about, one and a half, just run one and a half for everything. And depending on the number of drainage fixture units being served and the distance, because we notice that larger distances are going to require larger pipe sizes. But depending on the distance, you know, this whole setup can be vented by a one and a half inch vent. 906.4 tells us that when we have multiple branch vents like that, it must be sized to serve the total drainage fixture units that are being vented. In 906.5, we look at the sump vents. Now this would be for sewage ejectors or drainage sumps. Please remember, as we discussed in chapter seven, that the behavior of wastewater inside of a pumped drain, I mean, we're talking like the pump is pushing, that drain is full volume with fluids. That's different in the movement of fluids and in the requirement for air in that sump than your typical gravity drain flow type systems. So there is a difference as we vent these. In general, it says you're gonna vent these the same as gravity drainage system. And that means when you're running pipe, when you're hooking them up, it's like, yeah, run a vent pipe and use the same sort of fittings, build it out like that. But you're going to want to be familiar with this table, which is table 906.5.1. This is a different sizing table because vents for sumps have different airflow requirements. The way we size for a sump then is we look at the discharge capacity of the pump itself. Any pump that you install will have either printed right on it or with the package, whatever, it's going to say the gallons per minute that it will pump. You take those gallons per minute to the table, come down the left side. From there you come across and again we're going to use our developed length just as on the other tables. We need to know how far that vent is going to go to its point of termination. And the point of termination for a sump is outdoors. Let me make a point that auto vents, your typical auto vents that you would install are not going to work on a sump. They do not function the same. And your sump will be vacuum locked. So you wanna make sure to get this vent all the way outside so that you have plenty of airflow down into that sump. Then once again with this table, once we know our gallons per minute and our developed length, we come up to the top of the table to find our vent sizes. 906.5.2 gives us information about pneumatic sewage ejectors and states that the air pressure relief pipe shall connect to a separate vent stack terminating as required for vent extensions through the roof. So a little bit different if you're dealing with a pneumatic sewage ejector. Most of the ones we deal with are electric and so that would not as much apply. The pneumatics also have a minimum pipe size of one and a quarter, as we see with other pipe sizes in venting. I might emphasize again that sumps just will not work if air is not able to replace the fluid that is being pumped out. They have to have vents. <laughs> I made the mistake of failing to install one at one point and trust me, it doesn't pump when there's no airflow. So that does it for our presentation on vent pipe sizing from chapter 9, section 906. Join me in the next one as we continue on through chapter 9. We're going to look at the different types of vents that can be used and the application of auto vents. I'll see you then.